us carry on from where we left off. We were talking about the SSRIs, the um, serotonin, the selective serotonin um, reactive inhibitors for the treatment of depression. Um, we will just put that aside because that was a little bit technical and you know these days we don't need that technicalities when we come to information. We need something that is simpler, that is um, easy to understand for our viewers so that you wouldn't complicate matters, you know. Um, so I'm going to move it from that technical stage or technical state to a more simpler and less complex um, discussion. So we talk about stress and um, that is going to be in on page 120 of my book. Let's, let's quickly um, digest and digress and dissect stress. And as you know, we, we are in COVID-19 situation and era and everybody is really, really not in a good mood at all because even with all the protocols that we are engaging ourselves with, you don't even have the surety that you won't contract the disease. You go to town with your mask, you come, you wash your hands, you shower, you do whatever you have to do. But God is the ultimate because we don't, we don't know. We are only making sure that we observe the protocols from head to toe, from A to Z, so that we don't come in contact with either the virus or with either somebody who has got it, but you can't guarantee that. That's why you have to minimize your interaction, and especially in communal areas, and then when you go to work. That's why the government has put in place measures and protocols that we have to engage so that we move away from contracting the disease. So it is, it has become very stressful and that is why I'm treating the anxiety disorder so that we are aware of our life stresses, of the anxiety disorders that people are going through because people have leaped from the ordinary stress to the clinical stress because of this situation and especially when it is um, coming as a package when you know you've lost your job when there's no money at home when there's a whole lot of things playing against you it, it becomes very stressful so let's carry on anxiety disorder can arise in response to life stresses such as financial worries or clinical physical illness so these are sort of basic fundamental determinants factors that arises when it comes to stress levels when there's no money when you've lost your job when you can't feed your family when you are down with a physical chronic illness that will definitely have a debilitating effect a very detrimental effect on your life and with this COVID situation as well is making things worse every single day so you see where i'm coming from the reason why i dubbed it COVID 19 quarantine and how it affects our mental health because already every individual goes through life stresses in terms of work, finance, um, other areas, illness, divorce, um, relationship break ups and all that, family dynamics and all these things. They are normal everyday life trends that we go through that affects our daily life. So at the end of the day, 
if COVID has also added more to what is already there, then at least we might as well discuss it and then we know where we stand. So financial and physical, chronic physical illness, illness can also bring or increase our life stresses. Somewhere between 4% and 10% of older adults are diagnosed with anxiety disorder, a figure that is probably an underestimate due to, yeah, it's underestimated due to the tendency of adults to minimize psychiatric problems or to focus on their physical manifestation. So it means that 4% and 10% of adults are diagnosed with anxiety disorder. So it means that a whole lot of people are going through that because if we are over 7 billion population globally and 4 to 10% are diagnosed with anxiety disorder, then it means there's a massive number of people that goes through this kind of disorder, this kind of clinical um, state. So it becomes a worry and then it's critical that we learn something out of it so that we can be able to manage it whenever it arises because in our daily lives we go through a whole lot of things government politics is stressing us finance work is stressing us family lives wives husband children stressing us breakups all these issues they are, they are normal daily life activities normal daily life events that goes on that have a negative effect on our lives and that is called stress and that is anxiety that brings us anxiety that activates our anxiety and then when it lingers on for a long period of time when it's excessive when it's intrusive when it's um, permanent it becomes a disorder so a whole lot number of people are diagnosed with anxiety disorder. Anxiety is also common among older people who have dementia. So that is a bit out of where we are at the moment because the older adults with dementia have anxiety and they go through their own situation. Sometimes they kick, sometimes they, you know, they punch and all that when they are going through that anxiety disorder, especially those of you who work in the um, elderly settings you will see a whole number of um, factors there that will allow you to sort of assess the situation for you to know that this is anxiety it's a mixture of anxiety that culminates the dementia on the other hand anxiety disorder is sometimes misdiagnosed among older adults when doctors misinterpret symptoms of physical ailment for instance racing had been due to cardiac arrhythmia as signs of anxiety so that's what i'm saying that when it comes to mental health you might be wrongly diagnosed if the professional is not really up to speed with this current situation if the professional hasn't got that experience to sort of differentiate between normal physical ailment and then anxiety disorder. They might, they might wrongly diagnose you. And that is something that we need to be conscious of whenever you're in that situation and you go for professional help. You have to be conscious of yourself and make sure that you give out relevant information, information that are really strategic really factual to your situation you don't go and lie about anything because otherwise you'll be wrongly diagnosed otherwise you'll be wrongly assessed and given wrong medication and given wrong treatment so that is what we are talking about now for instance if an older adult has got his heart racing due to cardiac arrhythmia you know the heart beating um anyway you know, when, when, when it comes to cardiac arrhythmia, the heart doesn't synchronize in terms of the beat. It goes, it, it, it doesn't have um, a formula, it doesn't have 
that kind of rhythm that is supposed to maintain it beats anyhow so that is what we tend as cardiac